Sonic, the heart of your system. Hello, Bryony here from Kit Guru, and in this video I'm taking a look at the Asus ROG Strix Hero 2 laptop. It was a laptop they announced at Computax and I finally got my hands on a sample to see how well it performs. So the Hero 2 is the uh, model that's aimed at mobile players. You can tell from the fact that it's got Q, W, E and R highlighted, whereas the SCAR 2 is sort of like counterpart, is the laptop that's aimed at FPS players because it has W, A, S and D highlighted. So the particular model that I've got with me in this review, uh, you'll forgive me for checking my notes because it is a bit of a mouthful, is the GL504GM ES192T and it has a price tag of around £1,800, uh, however I have seen it on sale for slightly less as well. So specifications wise, it's got an i7-8750H processor, the uh, graphics card is the GTX 1060 and it's the 6GB version, uh, RAM comes in the form of 16GB of 2660Hz MHz memory and then it also has a 256GB M.2 drive and also a 1TB hard drive for more storage for games and things as well. Uh, however, you will find there are slightly different specifications available at different price points. The chassis has a thickness of about 2.6 centimeters, so it's not really the thinnest laptop you're gonna find with this particular specification. It's not really the lightest either at 2.4 kilograms. It's sort of on the heavier side, uh, but to me it is still very thin and portable compared to like your typical gaming laptop. And the overall aesthetic doesn't really scream gamer. I think it is very pretty to look at. Uh, ROG normally does a pretty good job with aesthetics and the Hero 2 is definitely no exception to that rule. Uh, the chassis is very sleek, it's finished in a really nice sort of like black um, sort of like classy design I guess and the lid has a sort of like brushed two-tone effect to it and they carry on that same design sort of around and across the keyboard as well. There's some sort of like subtle red accents on the back of the exhaust fans, but the majority of this laptop has the Aura RGB lighting. And to me, it looks really, really beautiful. I like that you can sort of like customize the laptop as to what sort of aesthetic you want to go for. The back of the lid, the logo on there, it is sort of like a subtle silver color when the laptop's turned off. Uh, but when you power the laptop on, it sort of cycles through all the different like rainbow colors. Uh, you've also got a RGB lighting bar across the bottom here that sort of like shines out from underneath the laptop. And also of course the keyboard is RGB as well. The QWER keys are transparent, so the light really does shine right through them. And also the sides of the keys as well are now transparent. Uh, so you get even more sort of like lighting coming through and it really does show up quite well in a like dimly lit room you can really definitely see the keyboard standing out uh, all of the lighting is controlled using the aura core software so it's got several different effects you can choose between it will also synchronize with any sort of like aura rug peripherals you've got so like if you've got a mouse or a headset it can sort of match the effects that are going on the laptop which I think is pretty cool and also if you want a more sort of like subtle approach or you want to save a bit of battery life you can completely turn off the lighting as well. The build quality on the Hero 2 feels great to me. It feels like a very sturdy, well-built laptop, uh, which is basically what you want. Uh, the overall finish is also quite premium as well. There's no sort of like horrible plasticky parts that make it feel like a cheap laptop. And it is very solid as well. Like there's no real flex to the body. And I definitely feel like it's sort of built to last and is a case of you get what you pay for. Uh, also the hinges on the lid, they glide really, really nicely. And also the body is quite well balanced so you can open it with just one hand if you wanted to. Uh, when it comes to connectivity, they definitely seem to cover all of the bases. On the left hand side is where you'll find the charger port, the ethernet, mini display port, the HDMI, two USB 3.1 Gen 1 ports, a USB-C Gen 2 and also the audio jack as well. The right hand side has a Kensington lock, a USB 3.1 Gen 2 port and a card reader. 
It has Bluetooth 5.0 and also the latest 802.11 AC Wave 2 Wi-Fi with something called ROG Range Boost. And what that is, it basically means that the laptop has four antennas, two at the front and two at the back. And it scans and automatically selects which pair has like the best signal depending on the orientation of the laptop. And that's supposed to sort of help eliminate dead spots if you're in an area that doesn't have Wi-Fi that is that great. And that's probably quite a good feature if you're a gamer and you're gonna be out and about uh, and you don't know what the internet connection is gonna be like. The 15.6 inch screen on this laptop certainly ticks plenty of boxes and I definitely think it is one of the more standout features of this laptop. It has like the super slim bezel so not only does that make it look a lot nicer, it allows the overall form factor of the laptop to be slightly smaller as well. It has a pretty standard resolution of 1920 by 1080p but it does have a 144 hz refresh rate and also a 3 millisecond response time as well so that is basically great for gaming on. It is an ISP level screen and it has a 100% sRGB ratio which makes it look really beautiful. It has a really wide viewing angle as well and I also found that it has a good brightness with minimal glare. The keyboard is full size which I definitely like however the numpad is a little bit squished on the end but it does mean there is very generous spacing between the keys which I especially like because it makes it a little bit easier to type without making it too many errors. Uh, the material that Aces have opted to use sort of like around and beneath the keyboard area is very very comfy it's very smooth and soft. Uh, I don't know if it's just me but with some laptops where they use like a rough plastic I do find it quite uncomfortable to sort of like lean my wrist on and type for a long period of time. Uh, with this laptop, I really noticed how sort of like soft and silky it was. Um, the keyboard itself, uh, the key travel is quite shallow and that's even in comparison to other laptop keyboards that I've used. Uh, I didn't really like it at first. It definitely feels like a chiclet keyboard. Uh, however, once I got used to it, it wasn't actually too bad. I just wish there was a little bit more travel there so it was more satisfying to type on. However, I didn't really have any issues while I was gaming because the laptop keyboard does have full Enki rollover and anti-ghosting as well. It is of course backlit with RGB and there's four different individually controllable sections of the keyboard that you control using the Aura Core software. There's like seven different presets that it comes with. You can also like create your own if you wanted to and you've also got options to change the speed and the brightness as well. Above the keyboard is where you'll find four different buttons that are sort of like hotkeys or shortcuts. So there's uh, one to sort of turn up the volume, one to turn down the volume, one to mute and unmute the microphone and also one to open the ROG Gaming Center software that I've got open on the screen. Uh, it just gives you a little bit of information on what's going on like temperatures and clock speeds and things. So beneath the keyboard, that's where you're gonna find the touchpad, uh, obviously. <laughs> and it is a good size that makes it sort of like easy to maneuver on and use. It's also very responsive and accurate as well. It also has uh, dedicated buttons underneath for the left and the right click, which I actually normally like. Uh, but on this laptop, they do feel a little bit clunky and wobbly. So I'm not a huge fan of those. I definitely think they could be improved. But I guess in general, most people are probably gonna be using an external mouse on a gaming laptop anyway. The speakers on this laptop do sound really quite good. Uh, I wasn't really expecting much considering the size of the laptop. I was like, oh, speakers. Uh, but the first time I heard them, I was like, oh, wow. <laughs> I think I opened up like League of Legends for the first time after installing it and the sort of like game sound blasted out and it was like loud, clear, and they do have a surprising amount of bass as well. Uh, normally I wear headphones when I'm gaming, but for like some games, I felt like I didn't actually need them because I felt plenty immersed just using the inbuilt speakers and this laptop and they also sounded really great for when I was watching movies as well. So this is my microphone and webcam test of the Hero 2 and as you can hear the microphone is actually pretty good. It's nice and clear and it comes through at a good volume. Unfortunately the same cannot be said for the webcam. It's located at the bottom of the screen because of the thin bezels and it means that it films you at like a really weird angle. Uh, it, if I tilt the laptop lid down it's basically at chest height which is definitely not what you want uh, and then tiffing the laptop screen up gives you like full-on nostril view which is really 
really unflattering. I don't think you could like Twitch stream or Skype anyone using this webcam seriously. Uh, it just feels as though it was added as a bit of an afterthought, which is definitely not what you want on a laptop at this price point. Um, I think if a lap, uh, webcam is important to you, then this one's really going to suck. Because even though I've got like my full lighting going on in front of me here, it still looks quite dark and grainy and fuzzy as well, which is a big no-no for me. So now I'm going to move on to performance, which is probably the most important part of the review. But I don't want to bore you with too much of like information and graphs and stuff in this video. So make sure to head over to the Kit Guru website to get the full written review where it's got a write up of all the graphs and testing and stuff that I did. If you are interested in that sort of thing. So I'll start off with battery life. I basically ran the PC Mark 8 home benchmark and this laptop got a score of one hour 42, which doesn't sound that great, uh, but that was on the the best performance power profile so all the components are basically running flat out uh, as I imagine probably most people when they've got the laptop on the go they want it to have the best battery possible so I also tested it using the better battery profile and it then got a score of one hour uh, three hours sorry and 12 minutes so that was definitely a lot better and because it is an artificial benchmark uh, we often say you can almost like double uh, the result that you get from that in like a real world situation so you might be looking at getting close to like six hours which is definitely pretty good however um the two hour mark is basically what we expect from a gaming laptop like obviously if you can be gaming on this laptop on the go you're probably going to get like an hour and a half like at the most um and it doesn't sound great but it's what you have to expect from a gaming laptop and if you want a laptop that's going to last you all day uh, it's probably not best to look at buying a gaming laptop basically Next up, I tested the cooling performance. So the Hero 2 has lots of like fancy new cooling tech going on underneath the chassis. Has some new high speed fans that have like more blades on them and it also has an anti-dust cooling system as well. And I basically wanted to see how that translated to like real world performance. The i7-8750H, while idle, it can maintain its full boost clock speed of 3.9 gigahertz. It does stay at a reasonably cool 45 degrees. However, when it, uh, I went to stress test the CPU, I did actually see it peak at 97 degrees. Um, that's before the boost clock speed was reduced to 3.1 gigahertz, and then the temperature dropped to a more acceptable 78 degrees. And that does sound like really, really bad, but it's actually what we expect from this particular laptop CPU. Uh, if you look at other laptops that have that CPU, it's basically the same story. And the Hero 2 is actually about average. Um, it sits neck and neck with the PC Spec specialist um uh, a PC specialist laptop, I think the Recoil 2, that's the name of it, um, and then it outperforms the Razer Blade 15, that can only maintain a boost clock speed of 2.5 gigahertz, but it is actually outperformed by the Gigabyte Aero 15X, uh, that can actually maintain a boost clock speed of 3.4 gigahertz, but in general it is definitely not a problem, uh, 3.1 gigahertz at full load at 78 degrees is definitely pretty good for that particular CPU. Uh, also the GPU, uh, it did pretty good. It hit a maximum temperature of 78 degrees under load, so that is well within safe limits. And in general, while using this laptop, um, using it on my lap, <laughs> like the name says, I didn't really have any problems. Uh, the bottom gets kind of warm, uh, so it does make your legs like a little bit sticky, but it doesn't uh, burn. Like even when I was wearing shorts, it didn't get too hot that I had to take it off my lap. Uh, so you're definitely not gonna have any problems, I think, with heat and this particular laptop, which is a big thumbs up because gaming laptops have a habit of just like turning into a volcano. <laughs> When it comes to fan noise as well, this laptop is definitely not too bad at all. Uh, I find that the claims that Asus make on the website about the uh, decibel levels are basically about accurate from what the testing that I got. Uh, my reading was only a couple of decibels off, which I don't have like a soundproof room, so it's possible that a couple of extra decibels is probably coming from like the environment around me. Uh, but basically when it's idle, it's basically like whisper quiet. You can't really hear the fans at all. It's even quieter than some desktops that I've tested. Um, and while under load, uh, it does get loud. Uh, but it's definitely not as loud as some laptops that's heard, I've heard. It's definitely not unbearable. And the speakers definitely do sort of like overpower the fan noise, which is definitely what you want. Um, and if you are a headphone user as well, you're definitely not gonna have a problem with fan noise. 
So then I moved on to doing like my artificial benchmark. So I started off with Cinebench and this laptop got a score of 1233, which is like the best score we've seen from a laptop with this particular CPU. And that's because throughout the Cinebench test, it could maintain its full boost clock speed of 3.9 gigahertz, um, which is better than the other laptops we've tested basically, which is why it got the highest score. Uh, however, I did find if I continue to loop Cinebench like 10 plus times, eventually that CPU does definitely heat up and therefore the score went down to 1097, which is still actually pretty good for a laptop. I also did my 3D mark testing and the results from that were actually like pretty mixed. Um, I started off with Firestrike, which is like the least demanding uh, benchmark that we do. And I actually got the lowest score from all of the laptops that we've uh, tested with similar specification. Um, it basically means to me, it looks like the GTX 1060 was like underperforming slightly. I'm not sure what happened. I did run the test several times and got the same result. Um, but when the tests got like slightly more demanding, so Firestrike Ultra and then also Time Spy as well, it, it sort of like caught up and overtook some of the other laptops and ended up in second place so uh, mixed results but in general a good result and I don't think there's really any issues to worry about when it comes to uh, the artificial benchmarks so I moved on to gaming performance so obviously uh, artificial benchmarks can only tell us so much and gaming performance is much more exciting to do as well because I actually get to play games uh, so I tested uh, Tomb Raider uh, sorry, Rise of the Tomb Raider, not Shadow of the Tomb Raider, uh, the older Tomb Raider, Far Cry 5, and also Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon Wildlands as well. Um, the Hero 2 performed the best in Rise of the Tomb Raider. Um, it sort of like beat out all of its competitors. Um, it did edge ahead of two of the laptops in Tom Clancy's uh, Ghost Recon Wildlands, um, but it did fall behind in Far Cry 5. But in general, there isn't really anything to worry about with the Hero 2. Uh, I think like with gaming benchmarks, all of the laptops are around the same sort of FPS level. So um, yeah, basically it just shows the Hero 2 is gonna play the latest games at, at least like 60 FPS, um, which is what you want. Uh, unfortunately, it means it doesn't really take full advantage of that 144 hertz screen. Um, if you do wanna play the latest games and play it higher than 60 FPS, you're probably gonna have to sacrifice some of the like graphics quality, uh, but for games that it's made for, I actually did a like bonus game as well. I also downloaded League of Legends. I like dusted off my old account, uh, jumped into a game and uh, in MOBAs like it's made for, which are in general like less demanding games like Heroes of the Storm and Dota 2. Um, I play League of Legends or used to anyway. Um, and in League of Legends, it takes full advantage of the 144 hertz screen. Uh, in general, it got around like 140 FPS most of the time, which is pretty darn good. Um, and it means that it basically does what it's built to do. It's made for mobile players. It plays MOBAs really well and you get a like super smooth buttery frame rate, which is definitely what you want. So overall, the ROG Hero 2 is a very attractive laptop to look at. It's thin and light enough that it is a truly portable gaming laptop where it doesn't really sacrifice too much performance. I think the speakers and the display are absolutely excellent. There's definitely room for improvement when it comes to the webcam, the keyboard, and the touchpad buttons. The CPU performance is one of the best we've seen from a laptop with the i7-8750H processor, and also everything stays at a reasonable temperature as well. It does cost £1,800. It's definitely one of the more expensive laptops that you can get with this particular specification. But I think it's definitely a case of you get what you pay for and you do get some really cool tech inside. So if you like this video from Kit Guru, make sure to give us a thumbs up. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Um, also as well, if you are new to our channel, you haven't been here before, we'd really appreciate it if you could hit that subscribe button so you stay updated with all of our latest videos and also get the bell icon as well and that'll give you a notification every time a new video goes live so you make sure not to miss any of our wonderful videos. Thank you very much for watching. Mm -hmm.